Hello everyone, welcome to Yashoda Hospital's Know Your Doctor session. Trigeminal neuralgia is a distinctive pain syndrome that could be severe, chronic and recurrent which causes severe functional disability. I am Dr. Lakshmi and let's welcome Dr. Ravi Suman Reddy, consultant neurosurgeon from Yashoda Hospital's Somaji Guda. Welcome doctor. Good morning. So doctor, as I recall from my medical school, trigeminal neuralgia is also called as tic dolore. Why do you think it is called so? You know trigeminal is called uh, tic dolero. It is basically a Latin word. Dolero means pain and tic means uh, like spasms kind of thing. So in earlier uh, days when patients used to have severe pain because of which their face used to go into spasms, that is why it has been named tic dolero. But a common name given for trigeminal neuralgia is also the suicide disease. That is because the pain is so severe and the patient tries many treatments and doesn't get relief. So he is compelled to even go to the extent of committing suicide. It results in many hours of lost man hours and patient going into depression, anxiety and uh, loss of work and lot of uh, interpersonal issues because of this disease. Hence for which diagnosis and the correct treatment is very important because basically this is a functional disease. That means if we treat this well, then the patient gets treated for life and can go back to functionality. Unlike in brain tumors or cancers, you know, where we are only trying to prevent the inevitable. That is, we are only giving control, not cure. But for trigeminal neuralgia, cure is 100% possible. That is why it is very important that we get, make the right diagnosis and treat accordingly. Many of these patients end up going to psychiatry doctors also because many people cannot see what is happening you know because the pain is such a subjective thing so everything about the patient appears normal except that he complains of severe pain cannot swallow food cannot drink water and any cold weather you know the pain severely aggregates and some people keep on rubbing on the face or in the site of pain causing pigmentation frequent uh, dermatological infections but otherwise the patient looks completely normal. Hence many general physicians who fail to diagnose this, uh, you know, end up referring these patients to even psychiatry uh, doctors. So you've mentioned that it's a functional disease and most of the patients are in severe pain then they usually appear. So what's happening to these patients who've got this condition? Is it a common disorder what we see especially in our country now? Uh, basically, this disease is quite common in the population. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the, um, the knowledge about this disease in the general public uh, is very less. Hence, they tend to disregard the early symptoms and take variety of treatments and, uh, you know, get delayed referral to higher centers like ours, which uh, treat them effectively. The most common cause of trigeminal neuralgia is when a blood vessel in the brain you know starts compressing on the fifth cranial nerve the fifth cranial nerve is a cranial nerve which supplies to the muscles of the face so basically normal the touch which should be perceived by the brain is perceived by the brain as painful stimuli hence any activity which is done in this part of the face is perceived as severe lancinating electric shock like pain within the brain hence the severity of the pain once we have done a clinical diagnosis, it is mandatory to get nowadays a MRI scan of the brain because the MRI scan of the brain will tell us what is the cause, whether it is a vessel compression, whether it is a multiple sclerosis plaque or whether it is a tumor. So doctor, as discussed, the trigeminal neuralgia causes severe facial pain. But don't you think that people get confused with dental pain? Uh, excellent uh, question. Actually, what we have seen in practice is uh, uh, the pain of trigeminal neuralgia and the pain of a dental cavity is the same because it is the same cranial nerve which is taking the pain. So generally what we have seen is many of these patients initial point of contact physician is a dentist and uh, once they go to the dentist with this dental pain and the dentist examines sometimes some asymptomatic cavities also might be found. So many of these patients undergo dental treatments like root canal treatment, sometimes dental extractions and many of the patients we treat, uh, we've seen are edentulous on that side of the pain. Luckily now we have so many of our dental colleagues who have knowledge about this disease and are referring these cases to us very early. Let me assure you, if you people have experienced a dental pain, 
trigeminal pain is 10 times worse than the dental pain. So you can imagine the kind of uh, turmoil the patient goes through and no wonder it is termed as the suicide disease. I'm glad that they don't have to lose their teeth unnecessarily and most of the dental doctors refer them to the neurosurgeon. So doctor, about trigeminal neuralgia, is it more common in men or women and which age group is affected particularly? Generally, it is the productive age group which is affected. You know, uh, the pain starts at around 40 years of age and as uh, the age progresses, we see more and more cases. What we have seen is there is definitely a, a preponderance of uh, women cases in the patients we treat. Uh, although historically, almost men and women have the same amount of uh, uh, percentage of trigeminal neuralgia. But what we have seen is uh, women tend to tolerate pain more. And generally, we have seen in the population that the tolerance of pain is, uh, you know, uh, um, less in working men rather than working women. I'm sure most of the patients experiencing such pain, they just take painkiller and settle at home. And that makes them come to the doctor very late. So what are the treatment options available for trigeminal neuralgia? Pain is unequivocal. Means every patient having trigeminal neuralgia experiences severe pain. Um, it is episodic. It is uh, short-lived, but it recurs. So initially the patient may be having a few episodes but as the days progress these episodes keep on increasing and makes life miserable for them even in many of these cases they reach a point where they are not able to tolerate the medications on a daily basis or they develop side effects because of the drugs like increased liver functional test or some dermatological allergies like you know sometimes people may develop rashes something going into photosensitivity or even steven johnson syndrome these kind of patients now we cannot continue the medications forever. So in these kind of cases, we have to plan treatments which are interventional treatments. So it can be either surgery, which we have been doing from eternity in the form of microvascular decompression or the latest percutaneous procedure, which is radiofrequency ablation, uh, which uh, from the last two decades has become very famous and now is almost the first treatment of choice. And in patients who have undergone multiple MVDs or radiofrequency ablation and who have not recovered, then we have the final option of radiosurgery, uh, which is again an ablative procedure uh, using the radiosurgery machine, which is the last option. So as we've discussed about the medical treatment options available for trigeminal neuralgia, but you specified that radiofrequency ablation is more effective. So could you please elaborate on that, doctor? Yeah, so uh, I said radiofrequency ablation is the first treatment of choice because see earlier what used to happen is uh, microvascular decompression used to be the only option available to neurosurgeons. Uh, microvascular decompression is a surgical procedure. It has got very good results. Actually, uh, up to 95% of uh, these patients have a five year uh, pain free interval. But however, you should understand that it is an invasive procedure. You need admission, you need surgery near the brainstem and uh, you need antibiotic coverage and as well as you know other medications and there is a less than 1% risk associated with these procedures so that there may be bleeding infection there may be a risk to life so uh, so uh, so now we are looking at percutaneous uh, minimally uh, invasive daycare procedures because these are very very suitable to the patients the patient you know walks into our opd you know, and we diagnose, do the uh, investigations and also we treat on the same day and we can send on the same day and the patient is pain free. And the best advantage is these are cheaper procedures. They do not require any uh, major admission. They do not need any blood transfusion, any incision and the results are in front of us. You know, within three to four hours, the patient uh, becomes pain free. Although they say that the five year disease free interval rates for trigeminal uh, radio frequency ablation are little less, maybe about 90 to 92 percent compared to 95 percent in microvascular decompression. But the advantages are that it is less expensive and it is easily doable and it is acceptable to the patients. Also, in case there is a recurrence of pain, a redo microvascular decompression is very complicated. However, a redo radio frequency ablation is easily done. Like in our experience, we have done now most than 1000 radio frequency ablations. If you ask me the percentage of cases which we have done the second time, uh, it will be in 1000, we would have done about 30 or 40 patients. We have done a redo second time and we have not done any redo on for the third time for these patients. So 
uh, that is why all over the world radio frequency ablation is now the treatment of choice as a first line when we go for these patients i think that's incredible getting evaluated treated and discharged on the same day and that makes their life more comfortable so doctor before ending this episode what message you would like to give to patients or people who are suffering with trigeminal neuralgia the only message uh, i can give to people is for caregivers and uh, the relatives and all be compassionate to patients who complain of pain especially facial pain because not many people can be able to articulate in words the kind of pain they feel and uh, staying away from work staying away from food these are indications that the severity is uh, too much so be compassionate be empathetic to them take them to the doctor you know uh, whoever is a good physician around or a neurologist you know get the diagnosis done in time start treatment on time and uh, these people can live a normal life and also the, you cannot lose lose hope you try to give them hope that you know this is not an untreatable disease this is a 100% perfectly treatable disease and they can come back to normalcy within a very short period of uh, time so we should be giving lot of positiveness to the patients and uh, taking them to the right doctors for the right diagnosis and treatment so thank you doctor it was wonderful having you here thank you very much so this brings us to the end of this episode we've been discussing about trigeminal neuralgia its causes and the latest treatment modalities with dr ravi suman reddy hope you all enjoyed watching this episode do join us for the next week as well thank you and take care